Well, we are nearing two weeks since Typhoon Malar hit the island and many agencies like the Guam Fire Department uh, responded even throughout the typhoon. I wanted to get an update and see how the agency has been doing and recovery efforts are well underway. I have with me acting Fire Chief Joey St. Nicholas. Off day, Joey. Off day, Joey. Thanks for having me. Well, first off, how did you and the family fare during the typhoon? Uh, we we fared uh, fairly well. I was actually working through the entire storm, so the home front was uh, kept down with with uh, my wife Lori and the kids. And uh, you know, we're in a fortunate to be in a in a pretty solid uh, house. Uh, with the, uh, but up until now, uh, we still don't have power and water, but we're we're managing. Yes. Yeah. And have you been able to kind of oh, have you been able to kind of check in and see how your personnel have fared throughout the typhoon? Uh, yes. Uh, so immediate, of course, immediately, uh, of course, uh, pre-storm, during and, and immediately after, uh, that's the number one concern that we have, uh, making sure that our personnel are are good to go, uh, most importantly, on the home front so that, uh, you know, they can come to work and, and, and perform our mission. So, you know, uh, firefighter and uh, emergency medical dispatcher and even our uh, our ununiform uh, personnel, their welfare comes first and foremost. Um, and fortunately, uh, we have very few um, that may need uh, uh, assistance, and uh, we're working with them on that. I know that there is a currently a PSA out um, about no the no burning policy. Um, could you, I guess, like, kind of go into detail about why it's important not for people to burn? I know a lot of people have a lot of down vegetation that they want to to obviously burn and get rid of. I mean. Um, but there's a reason behind the whole no burn policy. Yes. Well, uh, well, first of all, um, it's it just by law, um, it's still legal to burn unless you burn with a permit approved by the Guam Fire Department. And a lot of the uh, or the main reasons why we give permits is number one is to educate on how to properly burn in, in a safe manner, and two is to make sure that that there's a way to extinguish it. Uh, with the island island wide. Um, water water pressure and water situation as it is um i think it's just prudent that we just put out that prohibition on on burning um and, and it really it comes down to being able to respond to it should it get out of control so i, I would tell you joe in the last 36 hours we've had 60 plus reported unauthorized burnings uh and these are usually reported because you know the neighbors around them are you know whether they're drying clothes or as you know the power situation everybody's sleeping outside and uh, they're succumbing to to the smoke right which is the byproduct of, of burning and and so it's not it's not just about being able to respond to it you know with the lack of water but it's also the fact that um it, it can be a nuisance and it is a health hazard um to the surrounding population so um th there's many reasons why we're trying to put a stop to the burning uh, and we're trying to do it without resorting to to uh, issuing citations. We just, you know, we understand we're all going through this recovery, and um, everybody wants to clean up their green waves, um, uh, one way or another. Um, but you know, the best the best uh, solution to all of that really is to take advantage of of the the debris uh, centers that are being stood up around the island between the mayors and and uh, and Guam EPA, right? So that. Uh, we can put all these debris into one location. Uh, 